Hello, welcome by this session of the Processing Workflow in Context Capture. My name is Mark Rietman, I'm a consultant in the Reality Modeling and Mapping team from Bentley Systems and I'm based in Brisbane, Australia. What we're going to do today is uh, about using control points and a water constraint. So the control points, uh, if the model is not georeferenced or you want a more accurate georeference, Surveyors are doing the marking points around an area. Uh, can be with GPS, can be with total station. Get the coordinates of these known points, and then we scale and georeference the model around these points. A water constraint. Water is a difficult thing to uh, model in uh, reality modeling because we we can't really de decide of to find uh, the point. So a water sometimes looks like a mountain. It's not nice flat. So with a water constraint, we can flatten it. Using control points, so the workflow normally is we create a new project, we import the photos or the, uh, the videos, we run an aerial triangulation first, and then we add in ground control points. And this is a little bit depending on what type of data set you have, and if you know your, the data set, you can also add ground control points first and then an aerial triangulation. So you, you save an aerial triangulation because over here you have to do the aerial triangulation again. But depends a little bit on the data set. And if it's an RTK or PPK more accurate position, then yeah, maybe you can skip that step. But what I noticed that sometimes it's good to run an aerial triangulation to, to see if the images are stitched together. If they are stitched together, you run a new aid, you add the ground control points and run a new aerial triangulation. And sometimes you can see with the data set that I have that we add a couple control points, run an aerial triangulation, adding more control points, and then run a new AT and then go to reconstruction production. Um, it's so it's it's really a dependent on the workflow on what type of data set you have. So the workflow will be create a new project in the context caption master. You add your photos to it. You run your aerial triangulation. So you use all the, the metadata from the photo, the coordinates of the images, or nothing at all in the case that I have. So you get an, uh, a result. And then you start adding ground control points. And then we're gonna go through that workflow and then adding a new aerial triangulation and then maybe multiple times and then go to production, reconstruction and production. So let's go to a project. So we've got a data set here, some photos, and they, these photos are not georeferenced. Then I've got a PDF with control points. So see where it comes up on an other screen so you can see where the control points are number and then the, roughly the location and then let's go move this away and then we have a text file with with control points with the coordinates and it can be a csv file in this case it's just a text file so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new project and import the images and run the AT. So new project. Create a new project. Go to, uh, yeah, that's the directories. Okay. Ground control point project and then import the images. So it's a quite uh, a reasonably big project. And if you check here, it's uh, yeah, around four gigapixels. So the area triangulation takes some time. But what I can do is I can speed it up. 
by setting and down sampling. So I bring the quality of the image down. It is just for make it faster. So let's do 30%. Okay, so the, the next step is, I don't, you see the 3D view is not available. I run an area triangulation. So create a new block. No, no locations, nothing at all. Just keep it standard. Of course, I need to start an engine. And then start running the aerial triangulation. So it's in downsampling quality, so it goes uh, reasonable quick. Okay, the aerial triangulation is now finished. You see, notice here there was a relative, so it's not georeference, it's relative. It gives a warning that we uh, use downsampling, but that's okay. One photo cannot be found, so I can check it if I go here, sort out. I see one photo not in the component, but I also see it's completely water. So that's okay. That's understandable. If I go to my 3D view, you can already see. So this is the data, the, the way it captures. It's not georeference, but all the images are stitched together and it looks okay. So now I'm going to import my ground control points. So I got a text file with the ground control points. I go to my survey tabs and it's a good one to see, show it's grayed out, so what you do, you have to go in and out of the block, and then now it comes available. I can import a common format, there's a text file with spaces between the columns, so that's what I have. You can also use a wizard where you browse to a CSV file and then tell which column is what. So let's do that common format. So this is my control point text file. And now I have to assign the coordinate system. So let me look for it. So uh, no. It's this one. Uh, let me check it. VG map grid. So it's Fiji map grid, okay, and then okay, and you see the points are now important. So they're all blue because they're not assigned yet. And what you can do if you select a point, you can edit and see control points and the coordinate system. So what I'm going to do now, based on that PDF that I have, I'm going to assign four ground control points around the project. So uh, not so much uh for next to each other but a little bit spread out so i'm gonna use for example point number this is point number four i can get the location from this because it's not geo reference so they're not top of each other i can do for example let me check so number four is somewhere here so i can do selecting tie points i select and tie point here and then select the photos that can see that point. So for example, I select this one. If I go now to survey number four, I can find the point. So this is the control point. And if you do normally assigning ground control points, what you want to do, you want to do it from the different flight paths, different angles. But in this case, I'm just already happy that I can assign them. And then I run an AT, and then I, if I want, I can later adding more points to the same, same one. So the next one, let me see where it is. Um, yeah, let's take this one, number six. So I can already select uh, number six here, and I'm gonna do the same workflow. So I go to survey uh, to 3D view. It's here somewhere, so type on this selected. Something like this. I now find that point, oh, it's here. So number six, and assign it in at least three points. So control points, you need to assign in at least three points. So yeah, something like this. Uh, another one, uh, 
number 17 for example is over there so select 17 and then um, it is somewhere here and survey so I think it's this one So I've got now three uh, ground control points assigned. Uh, so I can run now AT, but I want to do another one. Uh, yeah, notice that if you do four is better. So let's see what I can use. Uh, maybe a point here. Oh. this one so i got this point spread out over the project 26a so 26a and let's do the same but what you know also notice if everything goes okay i can now already after 3 point say show me all the photos that the software thinks is the point is in the photos so let's have a look and it's already possible after three so you see that it's quite accurate already and even thinking about I used down sampled and I used only a couple of ground control points so now I've got four of them assigned and now what I'm gonna do now is now I'm gonna run an aerial triangulation so submit aerial triangulation I leave it like this use all the photos and the first time I often do rigid registration on control points not um, adjustment keep everything the same so it should go reasonable fast compared to, because we already have the key points extracted so because the key points are already in the project we're gonna skip to that extraction so it goes right away to 40 percent and then start with the uh, uh, yeah, matching of the photos. Okay, so this aerial triangulation is finished. What I can do now, if I go to, for example, 3D view, you can see in yellow the the points that are used, and then over here the in black the points that are not used with the control points. So what I can do now, I can easily start assigning more ground control points. So not probably not all of them are, fi are visible, but if I go, for example, select point number one, so that one is not visible. Number three. So the blue dot is the software thinks that the point is there. So and keep in mind that I'm still running a down sample model. So I even bring the quality a little bit down. So so. Uh, and I don't need to assign all of them, but if I go around, so for example, point number seven, you see all these photos are have this point in it, but normally what you want to do, you want to point a little bit in the middle of the photo. So with shift select, I can assign them. And uh, let's do, I don't want to do all of them, uh, but you can also just drag it on top of it and then accept point i try to do it in a little bit in the different flight path so a couple images and that's what i said before if you for example the point number what we already had uh number six i can now also assign it in some more photos so i can easily add some more photos to it because now it's quite quickly to do so I'm gonna go to that, uh, most of them, yeah, I don't think I need to add them all. But yeah, something like, um, and then this one should be reasonable, okay.
So now we're going to assign a couple more of these points. Okay, so now I assigned most of the ground control points, eh? and not all of them, I can't find all of them, but most of them. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to new, uh, new, run a new area triangulation. What I normally would have done, I would remove the down sampling and use the full quality. But just to speed up the process a little bit, I think I just run a normal area triangulation based with this down sampling. So I'm now I'm going to use adjustment constraints for control points. I keep everything standard and let's push it to the job queue and run a new AT. Okay, so the area regulation is now finished. And if I go to 3D view, yeah, I see they all turn green. But I can also go with the uh, quality report as an on tab for uh, control points. So if I go to my control points, then you can see the adjustment. So all of them are quite good. Right? Some of them less than a centimeter, most of them. So they are okay. So what I can do now, if I'm happy with the results, I can go to uh, reconstruction and production. So I'm going to do that because I can also use this model to explain the water constraint. So create a reconstruction. And I can make it a little bit smaller if I want. Uh, doesn't really matter, I guess, but something like this. And I can use in tiling. So I don't ha have to use in tiling because of the it's less than uh, so many gigabytes, eh? uh, less than 16. But I want to use in tiling to show that a workflow with the. Oh, why is it not picking up? So let's do a 500 meter tiling. And uh, yeah, so I just want to show what happened if you do the water constraint. Uh, now we start producing the model, so submit new production, and then, uh, yeah, what is it, uh, like a resort, give it a name, and then I produce in 3MX file. Quality 90%, and output coordinate system, yeah, you should use UTM zone from this area. Dress is okay, I submit. And now it starts... When the engine picks it up, it starts producing a model. Uh, not the best quality because of the downsampling, but it's enough to show the water constraint. Okay, and the water constraint. So water is, is sometimes an issue. Eh? It's, it's not really flat. It's more like a mountain. So you can, different ways to fix it. You can do it manually with it. Throw a KML file, for example, and you you set for as a water constraint to flatten it. But we can also do it with AI, and that's what I want to show now. So you, you have your project, what we did before, with or without ground control points. You do your reconstruction, production, so you have a, a mesh model, and then you can add a geometry constraint. And this is a separate production. Then you add it and you update your production, so you rerun the tiles. So basically what you do, you create a new production, select that you want to do water constraint, select the uh, tiles that need to be with water in it, and then um, yeah, you add the constraint to your data set. So this is that model what we just did. It's now processed and you see already for the water feature, so if you zoom in a little bit closer, it's not nice flat, and you see, yeah, underneath, if you go underneath, you see a lot of stuff. So what we do, we're going to create a new production, and then uh, let's call it uh, water. And then over here, I select geometry constraint. Next, uh, this is an... an Selector what we already created, what we ship with context capture. Select the output corner of the coordinate system. So I use the 
UTMs on and now I select the tiles that has water in it. So with this project I think most of the tiles has water in it but so let's do this one, this one. So these are the tiles with water in it and maybe let's do this one also. I can do a tag, I can give it a tag, so type 1 for example, so I can recognize which one it is. So almost all the tiles had water in it. Uh, I want to save the tag. Now oh, they are selected. Next, and then I submit. And now based on the existing tiles and that uh, water constraint feature, the, the learner, we can detect what is water and we can create constraints. Okay, so the production is now finished and you see that it goes uh, reasonable quicker, less than a minute per tile. And now we get an option here, apply constraint to reconstruction. So if you go back to the reconstruction, geometry constraint is empty. Go back, apply it. Now do you want to add the surface constraint? And then I said yes and you're going to add it to it. But first what I'm going to do is let's go to this one. Model. So what I'm going to do is is copy this model so we can see them before and after. So I copy that production. And then, uh, yeah, call it uh, something.org. So now go back to the water and now apply constraint to reconstruction. Yes. And now you see right away it comes up that six jobs need updating. But if I go here to my geometry constraint, I see him here. But in my spatial framework, I can see with orange, I can see what he detects as water. So this are. you see not everything is recognized. So I think it's probably with the quality is... Um, because I bring the, the down sampling also back. So I know I need to update my production. So I submit update. And the model is going to be processed. So I got it. I did it already before with a full quality model. So let's see the same data set so this is before water constraint so let's open it in the viewer and I have a look so yeah you see some issues here there some issues so let me make this a little bit smaller and then if I go then to the one after the water constraint, so the, the, the workflow that I just showed. It's not super perfect yet. I see there are a little bit issues here. So that's something that we need to adjust manually, but in the main area looks way better. So let's do make this one also smaller so we can put them next to each other. Um, and then this one. Oh comes to the wrong screen let's, let's adjust it so original left and updated model here so we can link these two views together so if you see here before water constraint and after water constraint so yeah, I think it looks uh, much better. And this is for basically you saw the workflow is almost fully automatically. 
Okay, so this was the session. So we uh, discussed how we can add ground control points. Uh, normally, we sometimes do multiple times running an area triangulation. And how the water constraint work with the AI feature. So create a new production, select what the water is, uh, run the production, and then add the constraint and submit, update the existing tiles. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.